Static X was at the forefront of the industrial heavy metal wave. In the late 1990s, they hit the scene hard with the album Wisconsin Death Trip. Success and several albums were to follow, but just like everything, all good things can come to an end. And it certainly did in 2011 when the Static X foursome disbanded. And then all hopes of a future reunion were crushed when founder and frontman Wayne Static suddenly passed away on November 1st, 2014. So we thought it was all done, but now Static X is back together with the original remaining members and they are set to tour the world in memorial of Wayne and in celebration of the album Wisconsin Death Trip, who turned 20 this year. And as you may know, I am a huge fan of Static X and have interviewed them a few times for the American Forces Network. So of course I met up with the fellas before they hit the road. Here is the interview with guitarist Koichi, bass player Tony, and it's the return of the original drummer, Ken J, exclusively on AFN 360 Radio. Static X and the song that helped spark an industrial heavy metal revolution. It's Push It on the American Forces Network. Yo soy Angel Orozco in Los Angeles with the members of Static X, Tony Campos, Ken J, and Koichi Fukuda. What's up, guys? How's it going? Good. Well, thank you guys for making a few minutes for the American Forces Network. As you know, we have the greatest audience in the world, the men and women serving our military, serving our country overseas right now. So we really appreciate it. I'm sure you guys are crazy busy with all that is going on with Static X and the new album, Project Regeneration, as well as the tour that's about to kick off starting on June 18th in Tempe, Arizona. Are you guys ready to hit the road as Static X? We're getting there, man. Uh, we've been rehearsing for the last couple of weeks. we got a couple more weeks of rehearsal, and uh, things are sounding pretty tight. And, uh, you know, I think we're ready. You know? We're yeah. getting there. Yeah. We are getting yeah. there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we are sounded better than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> not, not bad for a bunch of old coots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's really awesome. I remember when... The announcement happened there was uh maybe 30 some dates and now i was counting i think today is it up to 70 something yeah yeah i it's saw a, russia on there yeah and, yeah we wow. were doing overseas stuff uh it's really cool man the response has been really awesome and it, it, it's been great you know like uh to get to go to to you know to russia you know static x never went to russia oh. um so you know just just the, all the, the the opportunities that have come up, man, it's just been really cool to, to get to take this to a lot of different places, you know? Well, it's been several years since Tony and Koichi have played under the banner of Static, but for Ken Jay, it's been way longer, something like maybe 16 years. Ken, where have you been, man, and what's been going on with you? I've been hiding. <laughs> no, I, you know, uh, I've been teaching. I've been uh, teaching drums, um, taking care of my parents, uh, you know, just being a normal guy because it's, uh, it's just such a weird thing being, you know, the band taking off like it did, um, uh, was, uh, I mean, it was, it was a crazy ride. Um, and, uh, you know, I played for a couple of bands after Static X and, um, then I just kind of, it was okay to go away from it, you know? Um, so yeah, I've been teaching and um, that's pretty much it. Would you say you're regenerated now? I am totally regenerated. He's, he's even bionic. <laughs> I am part bionic. I uh, assume so there's some metal in you somewhere? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and tell about it. Oddly enough, uh, I've played drums since I was two years old and uh, let's see, it would have been about a year and a half ago, um, I caught a rare form of the cold, <laughs> of the flu actually, and I lost all my hearing in my right ear. So I have a hearing device, and, um, but all I have to hear is, you know, sequencing and click anyway, so. Yeah, wow. it's, it, when I have in-ears in, I can actually hear. Oh, can you, yeah. okay. But uh, yeah, 95% hearing loss. Which is, I mean, it's crazy. His left ear's, his left ear's perfectly normal. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's about to happen to all of us sooner or later anyway. <laughs> it's maybe not yeah, so but, quickly, I mean, but think about it. He, he just beat us to the punch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I've, you know, played on PAs as big as this building. 
No effect then. And and, and the cold got you. Yeah. yeah. Caught it caught the flu. Trip out, man. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> Koichi, what's your life been like from the time Static X broke up until now? What have you been up to? Well, I um, I try to, you know, get away from this circus life a little bit, and <laughs> and then around the same time, I I my son was born, so I wanted to be a good good dad to him. So I, you know, I became a normal normal family guy dad with a day job and yeah and but and you know but do some f few different music music project here and there but uh pretty much you know being home being a dad and did you really like that yeah i i liked it but it's you know it's about time to get back to it i i feel like yeah i mean he's he's 10 years old now so He's not a baby anymore. Yeah, he so. can take care of himself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> keep keep him away from the mosh yeah, pit yeah, for a while. Actually, <laughs> give keys to the house. Man. <laughs> Make yourself some dinner. Yeah, I'll and be then, back in a couple months. Yeah, <laughs> and then you know he he has had about you know I used to be in a band, but he never actually see me play. So. No, well, he did. He just, he's just, was he don't so remember. young, he doesn't remember. He doesn't remember. He was an infant. You <laughs> exactly. know, when he, he, he brought him out on that last, uh, what was it? The, yeah. The uh, the last tour we all did back in uh, in 09, the, uh, the uh -huh. Pedal of Metal tour yeah. with uh, Mudvayne and uh, Black Label. Right. And he, he brought him out for a couple of weeks and <laughs> he, he had him on the side of the stage, you know, and uh, I'm sure he saw something. He just yeah. doesn't remember him. <laughs> he was one year old. Yeah. <laughs> That's not one year. So. <laughs> Well, it's great to see you both back. It's Thank great you. to be back. It's great to be back. Tony has obviously been busy with uh, playing bass for Max Cavalera's projects and with Al Jorgensen's band, Ministry. But I did see a post from you saying your time with Ministry might be over. Is that is that right? Well, it is for the moment, because uh, I'm doing this. And uh, they're, they're going to Europe. Um, at the same time, uh, I'm going to be doing this in, in the U.S. Thank you, Guigi. Um, so, yeah, uh, unfortunately, I can't be in two places at the same time. Um, and, uh, you know, you only get one crack at a 20th anniversary. So, you know, here I am. <laughs> Is everybody open to the band staying together full time? Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it, we're certainly open to it. Um, I mean, right now we're just like, you, you know, just in the moment right now and just enjoying this for what it is and trying to make this as as best as we possibly can, you know. And, you know, once it's all said and done, you know, we'll see. Uh, if it's something fans want, you know, I'm certainly open to it. Uh, I mean, I still want to do other things and, you know, go work with Al and, and uh, you know, Max Calera calls up. I, I'd love to work with them again, you know. And uh, we st uh, we still owe the the fans uh, an Asesino record, so hopefully uh, when we get out of here, Dino and Emilio can get in and start writing the next record. And then by the time I get done with this, at the end of the year, I can just come in and uh, scream some uh, crazy nonsense in Spanish and uh, call it a record, you know. <laughs> so that sounds good. We're causing havoc with Static on AFN's Radio Recon. I'm your guy Angel with Tony, Ken, and Koichi of Static X. They've banded back together to honor the memory of their brother, Wayne Static, with a tour and a new album featuring the lost recordings of Mr. Wayne Static. So where are you guys at with Project Regeneration? We're pretty close to finishing all the tracks. We've actually handed off some stuff already to... Uh, uh, Ulrich Wild, our uh, original producer, he's uh, mixing the record for us. And uh, so we're really close. Uh, we're hoping to have all the tracks finished uh, by the time we leave for the tour. So uh, while we're out on the road, Ulrich can, uh, at his leisure, mix the record. And uh, hopefully that all translates to a fall release. So we'll see. That sounds good. Talk with me about the new songs that feature previously unheard vocals from Wayne Static. Are these songs that he was working on for another Wayne Static solo album? 
or just some old static stuff that never got used? Uh, well, there's, uh, well, well, the first stuff we found with Wayne's vocals on him uh, were from uh, outtakes, uh, songs that didn't make the Start of War record. And uh, we took those tracks, kept the kept Wayne's vocals track vocal tracks and uh, rewrote the music and uh, you know we came up with new songs with Wayne's vocals on them. Um, and then the other eight or so that we found were we actually found those while trying to find all our live backing tracks and uh, at the time Wayne was using the same machines um, to to not only play back the, uh, all our live backing tracks, but he was also like recording demos on some stuff. And um, the way he was doing it, uh, I guess, um, was uh, he, he was using two machines, one for his vocals and then one for all the guitars and programming, whatever. And so uh, most of the stuff that we found were just vocal tracks. Like all the music was lost. Who knows what happened to it? So we had to rewrite all the music. So, uh, but yeah, so we wrote around Wayne's vocals and uh, came up with uh, some new songs. What are some of the new tracks that you know your fans are going to love? Uh, I think they'll love them all. You know? <laughs> I mean, it, it's, uh, it, it, it's cool stuff, um, you know, because uh, Wayne, uh, at the time he was doing uh, the, the, those later tracks that we found, um, he, at the time he did those, he was still singing a lot. Like, so I'm guessing it, it, it was he did those during uh, the uh, Shadow Zone Start of War era. Um, so he was singing a lot more, and uh, so there's it's like some really cool melodic stuff. Um, and you know, when Wayne when Wayne wanted to sing, he could really sing, man. He had a really awesome voice. Like he could do the the gruff staccato. Thing that that people know him for, but but when he wanted to sing, man, he, he he had a fucking pretty awesome voice, you know, and so like this stuff is gonna showcase his his uh, vocal range, you know, and uh, and so you know to trying to add music to that stuff, you know, uh, just we were just trying to keep the music a little more of the Wisconsin type vibe, a little more the, the, instead of Wayne's vocals being all staccato, have the music fill that role, you know? So uh, I think fans are gonna dig it, man. I heard you start to mention Terminator Oscillator, I think. Yeah, Terminator Oscillator. Uh, well, that's the, one of the songs that, um, that's one of the songs that um, we developed from Wayne's last demos that didn't have Wayne's vocals on them. Um, but it, it's, uh, the, the way we found that song, it was one riff and some different, uh, different, uh, drum and electronic program. Mm -hmm. And so we had to, we had to write a couple uh, additional parts, but, uh, and then, uh, come up with a vocal part for it, which, uh, we decided to let our touring vocalist zero, uh, track on it. And it came out killer, man. Um. And and it and it's uh, like more kind of the uh, you know disco-y four on the floor kind of pounding song, you know. So I, I think fans are gonna dig it, man. Probably th that and and probably uh, disco Otsego. Oh too, yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, we had we had, we had to do an another Otsego. Song. Song. Yeah, 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 you got to do an Otsego yeah, song. Yeah, and that was another one of those songs that uh, were developed from Wayne's last demos that didn't have vocals on them, so. I know you guys had mentioned getting vocal recording assistance before you found all those songs from guys like David Draymond, Ivan Moody, uh, Al, Burton Bell, and stuff like that. Did you actually end up needing anybody after all? Yeah, um, I mean, we we, uh, we still are in the process of uh, uh, getting uh, or nailing down a, a, a few guest vocals. We don't need as many now. <laughs> uh, but uh, I did manage uh, to, or beginning of the year, um, I got Al to uh, to do some vocals on, on one of the tracks. So it came out really cool. Um, 
so yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll nail down a couple more for for the record. Um, but yeah, we're, but you know, like you said, for the, for the most part, it's going to be uh, Wayne's vocals on. So it's been 20 years since Wisconsin hit the streets. How do you feel about the album? How did you feel about it after recording it in its entirety? And did you know then? Could you tell that it would have the impact that it's had? No. No, nobody ever knows. I, I am, I know the old cliche about, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. No, I, I think um, I, I had a friend that worked in the music industry at the time on the retail side and I called him up and, and I just wanted to know how many copies had shipped before you know, for the first week. And uh, he gave me that number. And I just, man, I just almost broke down. I, I thought, wow, okay, well, I got to keep the day job. And I can't tell the rest of the band. <laughs> it's going to be a short tour. But then, you know, the we had toured. This was probably, I called my friend about two months before the album came out. And we had been off tour for a while, but the fact of the matter is we recorded in June of the previous year, or uh, uh, May and June of the previous year, had gotten done, and we really started touring then. I mean, we were doing uh, was mostly regional stuff, but, um, and then in November, the year before the album came out, we went to New York City. We did a show or two with Typo, a, a NME showcase, toured back across the United States, showcase for Warner Brothers, had a couple of weeks off. Next thing you know, we're playing in San Diego, opening for Slayer. And, and that was New Year's Eve, and we started touring after that. So while the... There was some, I had concerns about the numbers. You know, by the time we got to that first Ozfest, it was like, okay, we're we're going to be on the road for a while. I don't know that we any of us thought it was going to be till, you know, September of 2000 or whatever. But um, yeah, uh, uh, from a artistic point of view, I, ju I at one point, Ulrich actually looked at Wayne and I and said, you know, you never finish the first album. You just got to put it out because I think Wayne and I were driving him a little bit nuts. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think you know. I know that, the, you know, it's always been a common thing to say, oh, it's our best album ever. I, I, I just don't know that anybody knows that and therefore you know kind of it makes it that much more special it's a it for some reason people have grabbed onto it and uh that's awesome <laughs> that's great Imagine it's still selling a bunch of records today uh, yeah absolutely uh it, i still you know i i live in the midwest and that's where i teach and i still had people coming into the store where I worked at and they were like um, I'll either take a free drum lesson for you or you can sign this for me and you know so I did both <laughs> well, I'm Angel for AFN's Radio Recon and we are cold chilling with three of the four original members of Static X all right let's get down to business who is the masked man on vocals who is zero I know they're not going to tell me but I believe Koichi will tell me. Uh, <laughs> Who is zero, Koichi? You can be, it's just us. Mm. Paul he, Stanley. In a way, um, finding him is uh, the start point of this project. Uh, you know, without him, uh, without uh, Tony finding him, you know, um, this this is not happening, you know? Yeah, well, it's kind of like, uh, you know, once... <laughs> yeah, yeah, here, give me that. Yeah. Um, you know, once, once we found the guy, then it was like, okay, this is possible. This can happen, you know? And, uh, but to answer your question, uh, we don't even know. 
he won't show us his face. So, so you're saying he though? <laughs> so it's not a female. Yeah, I think it's I pretty obvious. Rule, rule that out. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's pretty obvious. It's yeah. not a female. Well, we don't know. Right. We don't know. But but I mean, I'll, I'll, but I'll never... tell you. But I'll tell you a good. Uh, my my buddy uh, Mark Rizzo from uh, Soulfly. Uh, he was uh, he suggested uh, long long before uh, we actually started talking about doing this. He suggested a long time ago. He was like, hey, it's my best uh, Mark Rizzo person. Hey, yo, uh, you know, you should uh, you should get together with uh, Tommy Vexed and, uh, you know, you should reform Static X and call it Static Vexed. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh so uh, you know, if, if anybody asks, you can tell them it's Tommy Vexed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're, ha- we're having the Static Vexed banner yeah, made get, right get now. Get that trademarked right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought the camera put 20 pounds on you, not yeah, no, it's not away. take away yeah, 100 yeah. pounds. It's a, it's a slimming lens. Oh, it's a slimming lens. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Can you also rule out that it is not me? <laughs> no, we can't. Okay. Yeah. I'm about that height, it looks like. All right. Well, so Zero really sounds great in the video clips we've seen so far. It looks like he's going to do just fine on tour. And it's crazy to see how well he is representing Wayne. Besides the hair and the mask, his mannerisms are even remind me of Wayne's mannerisms. So how is Zero going about walking the fine line of memorializing Wayne and mimicking him? Um, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, you know, um, it, it's, uh, it's, you know, Zero knew Wayne as well uh he knew him from you know back when we started touring uh his band toured with us um uh, and he knew him uh towards the end of his life um so you know he for him it's a uh, it's it's almost as personal um for him as it is for us so you know the the, the way he's approaching it you know he's approaching it as you know you know, how would I, you know, how would I want my friends to, to, you know, do something for me, you know? And, you know, the, so I think the way he's doing it, um, you know, he's, he's capturing the vibe and spirit of, of what, you know, Wayne did and how he performed and, you know, and just uh, vocally, is he? Is that the way he sounds, or is he trying not to sound like who he really is, and trying uh, to sound a little bit like Wayne? It, it, it's, or it's, just keep on pace. Yeah, with it's, um, no, he's he's definitely, uh, you know, uh, trying to. I'd say not. Uh, it's slightly alter the way he approaches, because uh, the way he sings is is different than how Wayne would sing. And so he's trying to take that approach of how Wayne did his vocals. And I think he's doing a great job. Well, I think I just figured it out, but I'm not gonna tell you guys. (laughs) We're all very excited and looking forward to the reveal of who the touring vocalist is. For now, he is just X-E-R-O zero. I tried folks, what can I say? Wayne was such a car freak. How much of a role did his love for cars, trucks, play in the writing of Static X music? Um, you know that that's something. His Wayne's love for cars and trucks kind of it, it that came on after he and I moved to Los Angeles. He had <laughs> when I first met him. I knew Wayne's car before I knew Wayne. He had a, a 75 Olds Delta 88. It was it had snow tires on it year round, and it was rusted out. So he just painted it flat black, and then he <laughs> he painted flames on the hood and the Kiss Army logo on the trunk. And I have a, I have a picture of it. I forgot to bring it with me. But then he also, he, so imagine this guy driving around Chicago in that car. No hubcaps either, just the big snow tires. And then he, he glued a, a plastic toy Tommy gun in the rear window, a couple of rubber snakes, little 
army guys all around the dash and the rear deck of the car. That car, I knew that car for like a year and a half, two years before I actually met him. And he had so many issues with that car. And, and I was a car guy, but I didn't own a car. I just used public transportation in Chicago. So yeah, that was something, um, uh, he bought a, he traded that car on a pickup truck to move out here. Um, and it, it was something, I would tell you that when we were working on Death Trip, lyrically, what we were trying to convey was motion. Um, I'm a, I'm a big IndyCar and Formula One fan, sports car racing, I love that stuff. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to convey motion and kind of paint word pictures with it. And um, uh, for him originally, he was like, just give me a rhythmic pattern. You know, that's really what he was, what he was focused on. That being said, uh, he bought a 74 Blazer full convertible top. That was our band vehicle for a long time. We'd take the top off and load our gear into it and go do shows. Between that and Tony's S10, uh, those were our, our band vehicles for a long time. And um, yeah, I think once he had a little more free time and a, and a place to have vehicles, then that was something he, he just started taking up. Yeah, because I could swear in, in some songs like, uh, like Hyper, um, hyper yeah, sounds hyper. like a, a n knocking piston at some parts where it's like, ticka, ticka, ticka. <laughs> I'm like, man, they got really loved cars. He was making sounds in, in the songs itself. I yeah, would, I would tell you, he, he probably didn't think of it like, oh, it sounds like a piston because he was, he was also like fanatically OCD about stuff like that. However, how he worked was. That sounds really weird. Let's use it. I mean, it, that's just, you know, when we were doing, when we were building the samples for Death Trip, we didn't have any kind of, the only drum machine we had was really rudimental. And so we put triangles and hand claps and just the dumbest stuff you could imagine on songs. And it's, if you listen to it with headphones, you can hear it. That's the best way to listen. That's some Pink Floyd stuff you guys had going on right there. <laughs> Back with Koichi Fukuda, Ken Jay, and Tony Campos of Static X. I'm Angel Orozco for AFN, and this is Radio Recon. Thank you for joining me as we start to wrap up this interview. And once again, thank you guys for allowing AFN Radio to crash your rehearsal. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, man. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having us. Where were you at on November 1st, 2014? And what were your first thoughts when you found out that Wayne had passed away? You go first. Me, okay. Uh, I was at home, actually. Um, and I think it was like nine in the morning when, uh, when uh, his tour manager called me. And, you know, I was dead asleep. You know, I usually don't wake up till like noon, one o'clock, you know. So I'm like still half asleep. I'm like, why, why, you know, and I didn't register it, you know? And, uh, you know, when it finally did, I was just kind of like, what? No, I, was, I, I thought he was joking with me. And then when it finally hit me, I was just like stunned for like 30 seconds. And then, you know, it was just like, oh, you know, re remembering everything that, you know, all the stuff he was doing, you know, and it was just like, Oh yeah, you know, it's like, it, but that didn't make it any less, you know, shitty, you know. But uh, but you know, it's just, you know, for me, it was, it was like, you know, like there, there, like as long as he was still around, there was always just small, like I, small hope that, you know, he would, you know, turn things around, and you know, we'd all, we'd all make amends, you know. I mean, I know, I know. At the time, it was slim to none, but at least there was a tiny little bit of hope, you know. But uh, you know, once he passed, you know, and then that's, it's just never gonna happen, you know. And and then, you know, once that hit me, then I was just like, uh, you know, just really bummed, you know. But uh, 
But yeah, you know, to, to answer your question, uh, I was at home. Uh, okay. Um, I was at the park <laughs> uh, playing with my son, and uh, and then Tony called me and then let me know. And uh, mm, yeah, and then of course I at first I it was just I was stunned and uh, you know it was. Un- unbelievable, you know, and well, and uh, it, I, I, it didn't hit me for a, for a long time. It's uh, you know, uh, I uh, still, I mean, still to this day, uh, you know, I can't believe he's gone. I, I, you know, I feel like he's gonna show up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or and um, but uh, you know, like Tony said, um. You know, I think uh, around you know 2011 uh, band broke up, but but I knew we're gonna get back to it. I I had strong belief to it. Uh, you know, it's maybe when at that time. I mean, we are maybe sick of each other, <laughs> you know. But after a few you know few years break, I I was sure we're gonna get back to it, and then so. You know, so for a while we are go separate ways for a while, but but when I get that that news, uh, you know, or oh, it it was you know uh, nail in the coffin, you know, static X is over, you know. So yeah, it was such a, a devastating news. Yeah. <laughs> um. You know, it was uh, it was crushing um, because it. You know, that's 30 years of my life. I met Wayne 10 years before Death Trip even came out. So, so um, and you know, when a. I mean, we were together five years in Chicago. Chicago before we even moved out here and and um, so yeah it it was crushing um, but um, I, I don't know <laughs> Tony and I had made contact earlier that year was it a couple of years yeah there was a, it was yeah we had texted yeah and then uh, I, I'm, I'm not too sure, but I think Koichi and I had texted. And um, I don't know. I think what Tony said was the best way to put it was, as long as he was still alive, there was there was some kind of hope there. And um, and initially, and all three of us would agree that, regardless of the band, you know. Um, you just hope for himself, for his family, because his his family are just, they're wonderful people. You know, people say the brother thing about their band members a lot. We were, were really close. Um, you know, I, I think that was why we were able to <laughs> tour nonstop for roughly our first six years, you know, after signing. Um, but yeah, it was it was a crushing time. Um, the the extremely positive thing to come out of that was the three of us were able to to bond, to help each other through it. We had a, some friends that you know knew us before the band got signed, and this is just like kind of an after effect of that, really. And we knew that we couldn't do it at the time. I don't think any of us were emotionally were in the place to do it, uh, and we probably would have made a bunch of really rash decisions at the time. So, with the passage of time and and you know the ideas that have come up, now now we can do it. I would also tell you this, just because I don't want this to end on a down note. Wayne had a terrifically morbid sense of humor. Um, Nothing was sacred to the guy, so um, 
we had a when we were in, the first year I was in his band in Chicago, we had a friend that was a writer that died, and uh, uh, it was sudden. The guy was only 45 years old, and uh, I used to ride to practice with Wayne, and Wayne barely talked at the time. And so we're going to practice, and here I am, you know, blah, 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 blah. Oh, by the way, Wayne, how did, how did so-and-so die? And he looks at me, and he goes, death. That was Wayne. So it sounds like this uh, Project Regeneration and the tour is, is helping a little bit. Also, maybe uh, coming to full, full peace with it. And do you guys ever feel Wayne in any shape or form in here while you're recording or while you're just listening to some all of his vocals? the time yeah yeah you can't you you can't help but not you know yeah, yeah. i still feel, feel like some you know sometimes he, he just stepped in hey, hey sorry i'm late you know oh, he would never say <laughs> sorry <laughs> 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 Well, this is a great treat to have you guys doing this for the American Forces Network. What, what message would you want to give to the troops right now that are overseas uh, listening to this and uh, protecting our nation? Thank you for everything. Thank you for all you do for us, and, and we greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Um, no, it, it like, you know, whenever uh, whenever I'm, I'm out on tour and... Uh, you know, particularly overseas, you know, and, and I run into someone serving in, in, the, in the military. It's, just, it's really cool, you know, because, like, you know, we, we can, like, you know, bitch and complain after, like, you know, four or five weeks being out on the road. And, like, oh, I want to go home. You know, these guys are out, you know, what, six, eight, um, over a year, you know, however long their deployments are away from their families, you know. And so, you know, when, whenever uh, I run across the, anyone serving, you know, it's just, you know, take take that extra special moment to, you know, say hi and, and really thank you for everything you guys do for our country, man. So thank you guys out there. Um, well, I'm, I'm in really grateful that after 20 years uh, still um, people still you know w care about us and I I really wish Wayne is here and uh, but I mean you know but we are doing our best um, to honor him so uh, please join us and come to the show Thank you for your support. <laughs> I know one thing, Wayne Static will always be in our hearts and Static X will always be in my playlist. Thank you, Tony, Ken, and Koichi of Static X. The upcoming album is Project Regeneration, and you can also see Static X live in concert. Check their website for details, static-x.org. For the American Forces Network, I'm Angel Orozco reminding you to keep your heads down and your metal horns high. Peace. We out.